Welcome to the Five Rivers Podcast. For more information, head to fiveriverschurch.com. We now join our services already in progress. Die like mere men, you will fall like others. Rise up, O God, judge the earth, for all the nations are your inheritance. And we're a part of that. We're a part of his inheritance. Father, we thank you that you are the King of kings and the Lord of lords, and that you have brought us here to worship you, Lord God. And though we may see all the junk that's happening in the world, Lord, you're still in control. And Lord, although you allow us to be able to do the things we do, in the end, you have the final say. And so, Lord, we just give you praise as we worship you this morning. In Jesus' name, amen.
is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly trust in Jesus' name. Sing that verse again. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly trust in Jesus' name. In Christ alone.
You were the word at the beginning. One with God, the Lord Most High. Your hidden glory in creation. Now revealed in you, our Christ. What a beautiful name it is. What a beautiful name it is, the name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a beautiful name it is, nothing compares to this. What a beautiful name it is, the name of Jesus.
And let's learn something new this morning, new way to praise God this morning.
our voices. With arms held high, Lord, I give my life, knowing I'm found in Christ, in your love forever. With all I am, in your grace I stand, the greatest of all. Love of God, my Savior. these pieces broken and scattered in mercy gathered mended and whole empty handed but not forsaken I've been set free I've been set free Oh, amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. Oh, I once was lost, but now I am found, was blind.
just see God doing that? That he loves us so much that he's, by his amazing grace, he's able to not only pour out his love in us and through us, but he calls us to be that amazing grace as well. And, and I am so thankful, I'm so thankful for this team that we have that leads us this morning. Amen. We're blessed. Before the ushers come this morning, I, I want to read you a story. Retired Lieutenant Colonel Joseph Como of Greenwood, South Carolina, tells a story from his time in the military. He says, my gunnery sergeant and I were inspecting a Marine training exercise when we spotted a second lieutenant, lieutenant ambling about. And when he, when he came up to me, I, I asked him, Lieutenant, what, what are you doing? He says, where, I asked him, where's your foxhole? He salutes him and says, I don't know, sir. And then he turns to the sergeant and goes, Sergeant, where's my foxhole? He says, right underneath you. You just need to start digging. A lot of times we ask the question, where can I serve? You know, the best place to start serving is right where you're at. Now, some of y'all have been probably thinking, well, I've been waiting to win the lotto so I can give a million dollars to the church. I want you to win that lotto too. However, if you're like me, you got to play to win. And I don't play. But you start where you're at. You give what you can give because it's to the glory of God. You serve where you can serve. You know, I, uh, when I talked to Brian about taking over for a season, he was not anxious. But he, he stood up and it says, okay, I'll do it. We serve where we're at and we get to see God using us. He says, to those that are faithful and little, much more is given. So this morning as we get ready to give, remember it's an act of worship to give. So if we could have the ushers come forward. Father, I thank you so much that we do have the privilege to give. I thank you for those that are visiting. I thank you for those that uh, are, are able to sow a seed to kingdom business so that we can do all that you're calling us to do here in Elkton, Lord. Lord, we believe that you've already spurred revival in our hearts and that you are going to break out and do enormous work here in Elkton. And you're calling us as a church here in Elkton to to pursue that, to reach out then for you so that you get the glory and you get the honor. And Lord, as we sow this seed, may you make it fruitful, not just 
in the church, but also in the people's lives as they give. We ask you to do that right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Once again, I'm here to do the announcements. But before we do that, won't you everybody stand up and greet each other? All right. That was awesome. Thank you, guys. It's so good to have everybody here. Uh, before I do announcements, I'd like to, um, to know if, if there's any first-time visitors here. Is anybody here for the very first time? Very first time. Right there, somebody's pointing. Who is it? Can you please stand up if you're here for the first time? On a Sunday. Yay! Well, welcome. All right. Well, we welcome you. Um, I'd like to let you know about Life Walk is tomorrow. That's a ladies group that we get together, and we uh, really have no agenda, but we just allow the Lord to work through us. We do testimonies. Uh, we encourage one another, and that's just a great time. So all ladies are invited to that. The Cecil County Fair, this year we are having a booth at the fair. We're going to be promoting our church. We're giving out flyers, um, giving out cards, promoting our church, and we're going to be selling T-shirts. But in order to do this, we need help. We need people to help us volunteer their time to run the booth so that Pastor Kelsey and Jim and I don't have to be there from sunup to sundown. So we desperately need help. And there's a sign-out sheet in the foyer that you can sign up for an hour, half an hour, you know, all day. That'd be great. <laughs> so anyway, I'll be out there stopping people. So if I stop you, please sign up. Don't, don't let me beg, please. <laughs> uh, everything else on the bulletin is ba basically a save the date. Uh, prime timers are having their luncheon on the 30th. That's always fun. And the best part about it is I'm not a prime timer yet, but they invite me to go have lunch with them. So that's great. Great lunch. Uh, the Tri-State Prayer uh, meeting is coming up uh, in August. Save the date, ladies' pool party. I tell you what, us ladies stay connected. If you're a lady here and you say, well, I'm not connected, it's really your fault because we give you all of these opportunities to get connected. We, we just had our um, annual dinner that we got together. We're having a pool party. We have Life Walk every other week. We have women's studies on Wednesday. You know, we're combined for women and men uh, here. There's something for everybody. Look at your bulletin. If you tell me that there's nothing to do, there's something wrong because we are providing a lot of things for you to get involved in. And that's how you get to know each other. That's how we grow together by knowing each other and getting together. Okay, so anyway, save the date, women's retreat, uh, men's advance that's coming up. You need to sign up. Uh, we have brochures on the foyer. 
please sign up before, you know, October, because we need to know, we need to make arrangements of, of how many people are going to be there. And that's it. Thank you. Well, good morning. If you have been following the church Facebook page the last couple of days, you know that last Thursday through yesterday, we had kids camp. It was here during the day. Um, we had different hours depending on the day of the week it was. But we would like to show you guys what we did. So if you participated in kids camp, you have a super cool t-shirt. And I need you to come up front because we're going to show them what our kids camp song was. While they're coming... While they're coming and getting themselves situated, I'll let you guys have a little bit of an idea of what we did. Thursday afternoon, we got here and we, we played games. We separated into two teams, the Red Thunder and the Blue Lions. We had team time. They had a message every night. The first night we learned about how we have naturally a stony heart because sin takes over and makes our hearts like a stone. But if we give our lives to Jesus, he gives us a brand new beating heart. Friday night, we played more games. We learned about how the Holy Spirit comes in and he wants to fill us and stay with us. And we had several kids pray for the baptism in the Holy Spirit. And then yesterday, we ended with a giant water balloon fight. We went through 700 water balloons in less than an hour. And we learned about that the Holy Spirit gives us the strength to go and tell people what we've learned about and tell them about Jesus. So now we're going to do our song. Sunshine. 
guys, and Pastor Lucy, if you could help me out with this one. These guys worked really hard, and we had a lot of fun this week. So, we are going to officially certify all of them as superheroes for Jesus, and then we're going to announce which team won the family pizza party at Seasons Pizza after church. So, Will Geesing, you are now a superhero for Jesus. Maddie Mills, you are now a superhero for Jesus. Carmela White, you are now a superhero for Jesus. Isabel Negron, you are now a superhero for Jesus. Ben Lewis, you are a superhero for Jesus. Vanessa Lewis, you are a superhero for Jesus. Finn Ferguson, you are a superhero for Jesus. Riley Ballas, you are a superhero for Jesus. And last but not least, Molly Montgomery, you are a superhero for Jesus. So throughout the weekend, we had lots of activities, lots of games. We had a special emoji pillow we would hide that was worth 10,000 points. And if your team won it and put it in my hands, you got an extra 10,000 points. Thursday night, the red team was killing the blue team. Friday, the blue team made a comeback, and they have no idea how yesterday went. So, in second place, with 205,400 points, drum roll please, we had the Blue Lions. Yay. And in first place, the winner of the family pizza party was, with 248,000 points was the Red Thunder. Congratulations to all our campers, and if you won the pizza party, meet us with your family in the foyer right after church. I'm going to need a couple minutes to tear down Kids Church, and then we'll all drive over together to Seasons Pizza right across 40, and the church will buy everybody pizza and drinks. Thank you guys so much for investing in the next generation. You guys can come with me to Kids Church. Just imagine what it's going to be like when we have 50 kids up here. We're just going to give the service to the kids for the day because there's going to be so much going on. We'll be celebrating what they're doing. And this was a great start of what God is getting ready to do, one of many things that he's doing through our children's ministry. Kelsey did an awesome job. Yes. And uh, we had Miss Joan taking pictures. If you haven't seen the Facebook pictures, you can go on Facebook and see our pictures. There's lots of things that went on this week. And we have another busy week with that Cecil County Fair. You want to be involved. We're giving away balloons. We have lots of giveaways, but we also have, like I said, we're selling shirts, and all the proceeds go towards children and youth ministries. So you want to be a part of that. I wanted you to turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 13 with me and I'm going to be reading out of the message, and while you're turning there, I want you to think about what does love mean to you? What does love mean to you? And a lot of us have different verbiage for love, and, and I, when I say different verbiage for love, I think of how many of all love chocolate? Oh, come on, women, men that love chocolate. You know, you don't really love chocolate. You like chocolate a lot. How many of y'all love Fords? I am so glad you didn't raise your hands. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. How many of y'all love Dodges and Chevys? Oh, come on. You guys are just a sick bunch today. But there's so many things we say we love, but the truth is we like them a lot. We don't necessarily love them. And so I want to talk to you about what Paul is trying to address is that our love needs to be seen more than our, our gifts. And a lot of times we think that if we have this gift, that should, that should be what's on the pedestal. But the truth is, is the love of God. The Bible says they will know them by our love. It doesn't say they'll know them by our gift or my talent won't know about how good looking you are or how rich you are. You may, they may know of you that you're well off or they may know that you have a nice home or whatever, but
But the truth is, what they're really going to know you for is by how much love you have and how that love is demonstrated between one another. You know, it's so often you meet some uh, really ornery Christians. Anybody ever met an ornery Christian? Some of them are worse than some of the people we call that are out there in the world that don't know Christ because you don't want to hang out with them. You're embarrassed to be with them, especially when they're rude or, or when they yell and scream. And even worse, when you start hearing them say an off-color joke or whatever, we sometimes wonder, you know, maybe I should not really hang out with this individual. And so I want to talk to you about what, what Paul was trying to illustrate to the Corinth church. You see, he understood that although that we have different gifts, he also understood that if we didn't have this love absorbed inside of us, that the gift would be seen in a, in a, in a horrible manner instead of in a, a good manner. And starting in verse 1, and I'm going to read for the first three verses, and again, I'm reading out of the message. It says, if I speak with human eloquence and angelic ecstasy, but don't love, I'm nothing but the creating of a, a creaking of a rusty great gate. If I speak God's word with power, revealing all his mysteries and making everything plain as day, and if I have faith that says to a mountain, jump, and it jumps, but I don't love, I'm nothing. If I give everything I own to the poor and even go to the stake, to be burned as a martyr, but I don't love, I've gotten nowhere. So no matter what I say, what I believe, and what I do, I'm bankrupt. I love that word. I'm bankrupt without love. And again, we live in a society that uses love a lot like the way we drink water. They use love for everything. I mean, my kids, I love every one of my kids. I really love every one of my kids. But that word would come out of their mouth for a person they met for a day. Oh, I love them. I just ask them. You don't know them. How can you love them? You know, but the thing is, is it's so, so loosely used. You look on Facebook. Oh, my goodness. Everybody loves everything. You would think everything's good. I, I know that uh, a lot of folks in this church, and I'm going to kind of rub a little edge here, that uh, really love that show that says what? There's a new one. Linda really loves it. Linda Butler. Huh? This is us. And it's a great show. And, and, and there's lots of other shows, but, but you know what? We get carried away with the show and then what happens is we get involved with it. My mom was a big, uh, as the world turns or as the stomach turns. Do you all remember that one at all? Oh, I just got to watch this. I just got to watch this. And I remember watching it one time. And I was thinking, oh my goodness, this stuff makes me sick. Of course, I was only nine years old, so it was too mushy for a nine-year-old. But I remember watching it, and this, this weekend as we were taking the kids through camp, one of the days we did is we watched um, uh, I Love Pets, or not, it's called, what's it called? Pet something. The Life of Pets. And there's one part where this little dog is watching a soap opera. Anybody remember that part? And that dog is like, what, what's going on? What's going on? I mean, just caught it, and that's kind of the way we are in this world. We get so caught up in the drama, y'all know what I'm talking about, of the world that we forget we're not supposed to be in the world or of this world, but we're just supposed to be in it, but we're supposed to shine the light of God. And sometimes when we get so caught up in the love story of what's going on in the world that our light doesn't shine to them. Ah, did you hear that story? about Pat, oh my goodness. I mean, she was just on Facebook all day long for seven and a half hours, and oh my goodness. I mean, that's kind of the way we are. Pat, I know you're not there, but I'm just saying, sometimes we get caught up in the stuff, the drama, instead of allowing the love of God to show through. And yes, Pat, you can pick on me later. I know you will. 
but we get caught up in it. And, and what happens is although all of this stuff is extraordinary, it's not the love that God is talking about. Good example. A couple months ago, I bought me a Husqvarna lawnmower. <laughs> I like my lawnmower. I don't love it, but I like it. It's a good lawnmower. And what I really like about it is when you turn the key, it starts. Because the one I had before that, I had to jump with my truck every single time. You see, it's a great tool, but you know what? It's not going to heaven with me. And so I want to make sure that the love that comes out of us isn't just making a great noise or making this ritual stuff going on, but what is worth something that is going to be filtered. You see, everything that we do should be filtered through the love of God. All of our testimonies, our gifts, our talents, when people walk in that door, they should feel the love of God when they walk in that door. And, and there's a difference between feeling bombarded. You know what I'm talking about? Like when you guys go into Walmart and everybody's trying to sell you something. Or you go into, oh, one of my favorite things to do, this is just a sidebar here, go into Costco during lunch and do a taste test. <laughs> it's a fun thing to do. You don't have to pay for lunch. Just saying. But anyway, we need to make sure we filter everything through God's love and not through what our justification should be. The second thing is this, is love is an action verb. We know it's a verb, but it's an action verb. It's, it takes action. It's something we do. It's not just something we portray, but it's something that we do every moment of every day. In 1 Corinthians 13, from 4 through 7, it says, Love never gives up. Love cares more for others than for self. Love doesn't want what it doesn't have. Love doesn't strut. It doesn't have a swelled head, doesn't force itself on others, isn't always me first, doesn't fly off the handle, doesn't keep score of the sins of others, doesn't revel when others grovel, takes pleasure in the flowering of truths, puts up with anything, trusts, God's always, trusts God always, and always looks for the best, never looks back, but keeps on going to the end. I want to I want to kind of boast on my best friend just for a moment. This is my wife. My, my, my second best friend. My first best friend is Jesus, but my second best friend is my wife. And one of the things that I love about her more than anything else is that when someone else gets a new car or a new house, a new hairdo, she never says this, oh, I wish I could have done that. But she always says, oh, I am so excited for them. I am so excited. In fact, I can honestly say in the 30 years we've been married, she has never said, I wish that I could have, or I wish they would have. She is always gracious that God has blessed somebody else. And that should be our heart. That should be our desire that, that people see that we are gracious and that we're thankful that others are getting blessed. Because the truth is, is if we're living in this life where love exceeds our heart, when I say that is, we are so thankful for the salvation that God has given us. We are so thankful for He that He's made us uh, His children and that He is Lord of our life that we can't help but be thankful when others are blessed. That's what it comes down to. It, And it's when you put others before self. When you, you're so thankful, I heard that amen. <laughs> Out of the mouth of babes, I love it. That we should always be thankful that others are being blessed. And we should always encourage one another when they are being blessed that God is reaching his hand out in a, in a hand of blessing. A lot of times I think we forget to do that. We, we forget to tell someone, man, God is blessing you. We have so many testimonies in this church that are going on, and a lot of times those testimonies get muddled, muddled, muttered, muttered, 
muddled, get, get sloshed in the mud when we start worrying about other stuff. We have multiple people in this church that have been healed. That is a testimony of what God is doing. We have multiple people that are in this room that have prayed for something for a long time and they've had things come about, like jobs, finances being, being taken care of, people that have been blessed in ways that, that you and I just cannot see it, that you think, well, why didn't it happen immediately? Because everything happens in God's perfect timing. Perfect timing. And a lot of times we get, we get caught up in with, why doesn't it happen now? Let me tell you something. God is not a microwave. He can. He helped the person invent it. But the truth is, God is not a microwave. You don't snap your fingers and say, God, do it. Now, don't get me wrong. He's done that. You read in the, in the Bible, there was people that were healed immediately, people restored. There was a woman that happened to get oil, if you remember, that the oil kept on pouring out into pots, and when she quit getting pots, she quit getting oil. There was a king that was wanting to make sure that his legacy lived, and, and he took a bunch, of a bunch of arrows, and he snapped them on the ground, and he stopped at five, and, got, and he asked him, why did you stop? He says, I don't know, he says, if you would have kept on going, your legacy would have lasted that much longer. We stop before we see the results. And prayer, through our love, brings results. There's so many results going on in our church, and, and we need to actually write them down because there's so many wonderful things that are taking place. And, and finally is this. The one thing that lasts more than a Chevy, more than a Dodge. Found on road dead. The one thing that lasts is God's love. And this is, this is the best part, is that he loves us in spite of us. Let me say that again. He loves us in spite of us. Because there's days that I don't like me but God loves me. There's days I don't like you, but God loves you. I'm kidding. Thank God he loves us the way he does. And thank God he pursues us until we choose to no longer listen to what he has to say. He pursues us. In this last part, and and this is one of my favorite parts. It says, love never dies. Inspired speech will be over someday. Praying in tongues will end. Understanding will reach its limits. We know only a portion of the truth, and what we say about God is always incomplete. You know that? that no matter what we say, it's never complete. But when the complete comes, our incomplete will be concealed or canceled. And when I was an infant at my mother's breast, I gurgled and cooed like any infant. And when I grew up, I left those infant ways for good. We don't yet see things clearly. We're squinting in a fog, peering through a mist. But it won't be long before the weather clears and the sun shines bright. We'll see it all then. See it all as clearly as God sees it, knowing him directly just as he knows us. But for right now, until that completeness, we have three things to do to lead us toward that cons con consummation. Trust steadily in God, hope unswervingly, love extravagantly, and the best of all of these is love. Love. Not what the world calls love, but what God calls love. One of the things I um, really enjoy about being here on the East Coast is storms. How many of y'all like storms? I know some of y'all don't. We actually had a couple of kids that actually were terrified of the storms. But I love the rain that we got on Friday. Lucy just that morning says, man, I'm going to have to water tonight. We're going to get home about 8.30 and, 
and I'm going to have to water. And you know what? God provided the rain. You don't have to worry about watering. In fact, you don't have to worry about watering at all because it gets saturated around here. We just moved from Texas. Think about it. It's been almost a year. In 15 days, it'll be a year. It's hard to believe. We just moved from Texas, and they begged for water. We had to water everything twice a day. That's how bad it was. But the storms here, God provides, and I think of the words in the book of Genesis, when God told Adam and Eve to tend the garden, he provided the moisture every day for that garden to grow. Now, I'm not going to say the East Coast is the Garden of Eden. I'm not, I'm not even going to go there. You all know your home life, so I'm not even going to go there. But I'm going to say this. God blesses us in the midst of our complaining. He loves us enough to bring the water so that my, wa- my wife didn't have to go out and water on Friday night. So to me, that, that's, that is God's love. That's one way of showing his love for us. And there's many, many other ways that we can see his love. And God is saying that the way I love you is the way that you should love one another. We get caught up in the gifts. I'm thankful for the gifts that God has given me. I'm thankful for the gift that God has given me of his love and his eternal life. But you know what? I'm more thankful that I have him. And that should exude out of every portion of my being. That should exude out of every portion of all of our beings so that we can be seen as, 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 as Jesus says, they will be known by their love for one another. Can we become that kind of a church? Because that's what God is calling us to become is to be a church that's so full of God's love that it shows without even having to say a word. Would you stand with me? Father, I thank you for your word. I thank you for your word, Lord. I thank you, Lord, that you don't call us to be holy as you are, but you do call us to be holy, Lord. To live a life that runs after your character. And Lord, your greatest character is your love. And Lord, I pray more than anything else that 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 would be the message that everybody received today is that we should be your love. We should be your love in our actions. We should be love in our the way that we talk to one another, the way that we talk to other people outside this place. And Lord, people should be able to see that. That others are more important than us. Because when we do that, Lord, we're portraying your glory. And we're portraying your presence in our life. So Father, I, will pr- I, I pray that the fruit that they will be known by their love, would bear witness in us throughout this week, throughout this month, until we get together again, Lord, whether it's next this coming Wednesday or at Life Walk or wherever it may be, that, that when we come together, we will bear fruit and be able to have a quick testimony of what you're doing in our life. Lord, I thank you that you loved us so much that you came to earth, chose to become a man, that you died on the cross and that you rose on that third day so that we could have eternal life. Lord, I thank you for that. I thank you that you are our Lord and our Savior. And Lord, I pray that, that everyone in this room will walk that out. In Jesus' name, amen. Give someone a hug and say, I love you, but mean it. If you've never visited us at Five Rivers, we want to invite you to this week's services with ministry for the entire family. For location information, visit us online at fiveriverschurch.com.